The acting director of Citizenship and Immigration Services says that the inscription on the Statue of Liberty welcoming immigrants to the United States is about people coming from Europe. He also says that it will help immigration issues if the Statue of Liberty were hotter. <laughs> He's not wrong. It's true. Rapper ASAP Rocky has been released from Swedish prison and returned to the U.S. And after 24 hours amid our air pollution, reality TV, and Midwestern tourists, he's requesting to return to Swedish jail. As Generation Z enters the workforce, employers have noticed artistic flourishes on their resumes like bitmojis, illustrations of college mascots, and icons to denote hobbies. They can also type at an impressive speed of 85 emojis per minute. <laughs> Universal Pictures is canceling the release of the controversial film The Hunt. The film is controversial because it's not a subpar remake of some movie we loved from our childhood. President Trump's GOP challenger Bill Weld joked that if President Trump won't debate him, he'll debate Alec Baldwin. And if Alec Baldwin won't debate him, he'll debate one of those dudes who post video rants from their pickup truck. <laughs> The annual list of college rankings has been released, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison has been ranked the number one beer drinking school. And they've gone ahead and announced that their graduation speaker is Brett Kavanaugh. I like beer. And finally, Illinois has passed a law requiring LGBT history to be part of school curriculum. Though it seems excessive that gym class now has a required course where you toss hot dogs into Mike Pence's mouth. <laughs> the Trump <laughs> Report starts now. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey, welcome to the Trump Report, the one and only source for news and information about President Trump. No one else talks about President Trump. The only place you can find him. A lot it. of people forget about him. I mean, there's days that go by where <laughs> CNN doesn't even mention him once. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm thinking that. Anyway, I'm Christian Blatt, joined by the lovely, the talented, the one and only. The here. <laughs> the one that showed up. The one and up. only here. The one, <laughs> the one that's here. That doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> that's true. Our friend Scott is in uh, is in Germany. <laughs> Chelsea is, uh, I don't know, being debriefed, which sounds naughty, but I don't think it really is. But Tara Brown. Hello. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. And, I mean, is it? Because if we were talking, <laughs> you know, if we were doing an after show for, oh, uh, I mean, you know, th th there's three other studios here. They're probably having more fun than we are, mm -hmm. you know, getting to talk about, uh, so you think you can dance or. I, sure. I you this know. one certainly uh, is the most difficult. I mean, we probably talk about. And never mind. I was going to say we probably talk about guns a lot more, but I don't think that's true. That's probably the reality not true. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we probably, uh, you know, we have the uh, we have After Buzz cornered on uh, talking about kids in cages. I don't think anybody <laughs> else has anywhere near yeah. as much. But the big story until NBC's new hit, <laughs> kids, kids in, in Cages. cages. <laughs> There's the masked kid <laughs> in a cage. There's a time period where if they had put that on at 8.30 between Friends and Seinfeld, the, all of America would have watched it just yeah. because they're too lazy to change the channel. Yeah. Now forget <laughs> it. But back then. In any case, uh, the big news today is that uh, at one point the Dow was down like 658 points. And I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I don't care what that means because I don't have any money. Tamara? I keep, I keep my money in a bag of nickels under my bed. So uh, so know. that's your portfolio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my uh, portfolio is uh, basically just photos of money I used to have. You know, <laughs> it's it's the toys that litter uh, my house. The toys that obviously are for my children, not for myself. My toys are all still mint and packaged up on a shelf. I would never play play with them well, kids those, don't now that's probably a smarter investment probably but who has more fun that's the real question but when you when you hear any kind of bad economic indicator the you know the trump loyalists the trump team the thing that they tend to point to the most is the just gangbusters economy that's out there. Mm -hmm. How nervous do you think they get on a day where it's like, oh, that's that's a lot. That's a, I, I, Look, I know 658 is a lot. That's what I can take away from the, the Dow. I think, like you and I were just saying, I think they don't understand what that means. Now, granted, you know, uh, there are the supporters that are the one percenters that, you know, he, mm -hmm. you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yeah, they, sure. of course, get it. But the, but the, you know, large groups of 
Trump supporters and the old Rust Belt and the coal miners and such. Um, I'm not saying that they they don't have a, uh, an, an investment in that sort of thing, just the same yeah. that we don't, and that's why we don't know those those points. They mean nothing to me, and I think the same and, goes for a large majority of his, his supporters. Right, and uh, I was uh, looking back on a, a simpler time, around noon Pacific time today. Apparently that uh, uh, the Dow went down 800 points today. So uh, I've just lost uh, no more money than I'd lost before because it's it's really, it's it's all gone at this point. But... For those of you who had money, uh, our condolences, and are you looking right now, if you're a viewer of this show, to see if that $50 that you sent to Beto, maybe you could get it back? You know, maybe you're just having second or third thoughts about that. I'm just asking, mm-hmm. asking for a friend. She's not here right now. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, I let us know what you think in the chat and uh, what everybody, sorry, but our Scott Brown kids in cages svu that that just makes <laughs> exactly me and uh yes <laughs> he also points out that i'm influenced uh i'm influenced by the comic book economy aka big marvel that's true that's those mm-hmm. are stocks that i that i definitely keep again thank that's you for probably that. a more a smarter investment oh yeah i mean if you could have bought into marvel before disney uh, bought them you no know? no i mean just the the comic books oh the actual comic not, books. not the stock yeah no no look i've my Amazing Spider-Man 300 didn't just dip 800 points in value, so uh, look yeah. out for that. Yeah. In any case, uh, but Betsy in the chat, welcome Betsy, says that stocks are on sale. Definitely time to stock up. I don't even think she means that as as like wordplay. It would be the time to stock up on stocks. Mm. And uh, yeah, if only I had some money. How many nickels do you have under your bed? Do you think you have enough to buy a stock, Mm-mm. like one share of something? Uh, I, I, I don't think. I think if the Wolf of Wall Street taught us anything, it's that it's not smart to buy one share uh it's not smart to buy those penny stocks so nope not doing it uh in the chat also uh aramal janasi wants to know if this show is like the onion live uh, you could say that except that the jokes are actually just things taken from real life and uh, you can decide if they're funny or not you yeah. know that's i hope that you do <laughs> it's it's like the onion if it made you cry <laughs> hey wait a minute onions make you cry mm. Uh, I, I didn't even know how smart I was being just then. Anyway, so... Uh, but that's a compliment. I appreciate that she... And, and, until she changes her mind she, after yeah, watching she's probably going to be minutes. like, oh, it's, it, she's like, yeah, it wasn't She's like, oh, it's close. clearly not. Clearly not, the, yeah, 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 because there, there were no jokes. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, people with a lot of money, but uh, people who don't have a lot of money are people who get food stamps which by the way i do believe food stamps i'm using air quotes is an old term i don't think you actually get the stamps anymore so you get the ebt EBT card card. right Mm -hmm. and i understand when you're using it as a talking point it's better to say food stamps than the ebt card because if you are a one percenter you have no idea what that is Mm -hmm. you think that that's just one of the many different uh abbreviations on the back of your food assistance um you talk you call it food assistance and oh, I just I can't remember the term that you call there. There's a term that um, for people who are on EBT uh, food vulnerable or something like that. Oh, food it, vulnerable. It, it, yeah, it's called. It, that's not it, but it's something like that. Well, he uh, President Trump has the uh, public charge rule that uh, if you're an immigrant on food stamps. EBT, and I almost called it the wrong thing, ABT. But uh, I'm thinking of America's Got Talent, clearly. But that you would not be able to get a green card. So this is an interesting sort of thing because first we were taking, and we, I mean the country, I don't mean Tamara and I, we weren't going to door to door, to door and trying to make sure that uh, people who were here illegally didn't get uh, Medicare and didn't get uh, other assistance. But now if you're an immigrant, a, a legal immigrant, you did it the right way, then you're not supposed to be able to get any of these things. You know what? If he wants to take away public assistance from immigrants, okay, fine. But you know what? First, you need to make it a rule that immigrants cannot uh, purchase a million dollar real estate. Let's make that a law first. Let's put that into into place first, and then after we have that a law, then take away the public assistance from from because th- what this administration does is it focuses on the poor people who are just trying to live, just struggling, trying to have uh, an acceptable. Um, 
price of living, but but where they continuously neglect to um, even consider that you know one of the reasons that California's housing we're in a housing crisis is because people are coming in from other countries and buying these extremely high you know cost properties and driving driving the real estate prices up so. You know, let's put some let's put some um, rules on the uh, wealthy immigrants coming in first, and then and then maybe. Well, when we're paying this kind of attention to uh, any kind of uh, government services, it, it always brings back the idea of when you get to Social Security, you know, or any of these benefits. Maybe uh, just do a little bookkeeping and make sure that the person that's getting the check actually needs it, because. You know, uh, I believe Donald Trump is an AARP member. I'm sure he qualifies for Social Security. Probably gets a check because that's the way that it works. There's not means testing for it. You know, so well, if you, we really want to no, look at it, no, but there is a you you if you have a certain amount of income. annual income, you can't you, you yeah you don't receive it. Okay, somehow Don Jr. I think is probably on Social Security, even though he's you know in his 40s or whatever. But I I, I think that that's. Yeah, probably mm-hmm. for. But that doesn't mean that, of course, that they've you know found some, you know hidden, <laughs> hidden their right. assets and so, hidden. So Donald Trump might not be the best example, mm-hmm. but the fact is there are plenty of people who he probably hangs out with at Mar-a-Lago that get Social Security checks, but they're members at Mar-a-Lago. So, you know, is that where they're <laughs> they're just like, oh, that's fun. Well, here goes my Social Security check, but I've got my other millions. So. I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, they always say that entitlement programs are the third rail of politics, but Donald Trump doesn't seem to care. So maybe we should just take a look at it uh, on the whole. I mean, you know, Tamara and I will never get Social Security. There would be no money left in the system. I mean, and I'm old. I'm just not old enough where I'm actually going to ever see it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking of friends of Donald Trump that he hangs out with oh boy. at mar I can't imagine where this is going. I'm g- <laughs> Well, he has a lot of friends. <laughs> he d- does. Do you think he, I might talk he, about Dennis Rodman? He does that. Uh, George Takei, who was a friend of his no, on The Celebrity Apprentice. That's not a friend. A friend of Donald Trump's. Uh, apparently, uh, look, a great tweet that I saw over the weekend. Hey, everybody. This was from Andy Levy, who used to be on Red Eye on uh, Fox News. He said, hey, everybody, go easy on President Trump. He lost a friend. <laughs> After the suicide, and uh, a lot of people like to use the air quotes with suicide for uh, Jeffrey Epstein, and I think that uh, a lot of people can look at reasons why some very powerful people might have wanted him to die. Uh, I think very unpowerful people, namely the young girls that he preyed on, also would like him to die, but I don't know that that necessarily means that Somebody walked in and and killed him, uh, but that didn't stop President Trump from retweeting and commenting repeatedly on the fact that uh, Bill Clinton is uh, was a friend of Jeffrey Epstein's. But of course, it seems very strange, only considering that Donald Trump, we've seen video with him, and uh, one of the accusers said that, oh, Donald Trump was Jeffrey's best friend. Well, how did you know that? Oh, he told me that. Jeffrey would brag about how Donald Trump was his best friend. By the way, I don't think Donald Trump had him killed. <laughs> imagine bragging that well, Donald... Imagine thinking that that is a badge that, of honor. Yeah. It, they, you know, because that, that's what you need to do is to to impress your underage sex slaves. Is like, by the way, you know that guy on Celebrity Apprentice? <laughs> you know that 67-year-old man that you can barely recognize yeah. his name? <laughs> So wow. you remember he was at the party, yeah, and he told you he looked you looked like his daughter, yeah, that guy. Oh, gross. Well, I don't know if that's true, but I did read that somewhere. But look, I read a lot of things. Most of it, <laughs> I admit, is not true. So there are uh, a, a lot of uh, schools of thought. And by the way, uh, very specific allegations. The day before we heard about the suicide came out against Prince Andrew from the royal family. So, uh, Wait, with one the of, with suicide a, came out against Prince. What? So there was news that broke the day before the suicide. Uh, uh, Prince Andrew, very specific allegations and sort of like evidence placing him in places. You know, testimony against him with like a fourteen-year-old girl. With the Jeffrey Epstein crew, or yes, just a separate the, no, 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 with the Jeffrey incident. Epstein crew. Okay. So I'm just saying, there's a lot of people you can point to. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying any of them did it. I also think that anybody who might be responsible, I don't think that they sent someone to kill him in a cell. I think that 
you know, it's very easy to, you know, bribe some uh, corrections sure. officials. The correction to officials just, just didn't keep an eye on You just them. look away. Yeah. And, hey, Jeffrey, here's, a, you know, uh, we know that you tried to kill yourself a couple weeks ago. Anyway, we've got uh, this extra set of bed sheets that uh, you can just change your bed anytime you want to. Uh-huh. We're going to leave you alone. We'll check in on the morning, buddy. So, you know, I think... Do you think, mind if I put my rope right yeah, here? Yeah, I, just I, in case. I just, I'm going to run to the bathroom, yeah. and I just need to... I'm, I can't bring my rope in there, so I'm just yeah. going to set it here And I broke my, I broke my shoelace, and you know what? I'm just going to throw the shoes out. I'm just going to leave them here. You want them, but maybe they fit you. So any of these things, I, I think, is sort of the indirect way. But what do you think, Tamara, when it comes to the idea? And this is these are the sort of stories that infuriate Chelsea. But I think, you know, when the president's talking about it, and he's, I was going to say indirectly, but almost directly implicating a former president uh, about, you know, having been possibly involved in murdering someone who was in federal prison. What are your thoughts on uh, all of this? It makes me wonder that where is, okay, it, it's it's a big blow to the case that he cannot testify at this point. But if he was going to testify, he would just lie anyway. So where are the facts that a prosecution would use in this case anyway? There, I mean, I'm hoping they're still going to go forward with with the case as if they would if he were still alive. So where is the paper trail? Don't we have text message uh, data of, of messages exchanged over email and phone calls and things like that? I mean, there's... I, I don't think we're necessarily losing key evidence by Jeffrey Epstein no longer being able to testify. Yeah, and everyone's uh, you know trying to track down the woman who essentially was his madam, madam mm-hmm. and I, I can't pronounce her name, so I'm not going to try. But in any case, uh, yeah, and our Scott Brown makes the point, just sort of uh, riffing off of what I said. Hey, Jeff, we hear you like sheets with a high thread count. Try these on for size. Exactly. <laughs> So let us know what you think, but I I think that I don't think for a second that uh, Donald Trump thinks that Bill Clinton had him killed. I just think he thinks it's an amazingly fun opportunity to (laughs) annoy him, but it still drives him crazy that three million people, three million more people voted for Hillary than for him. So there's no one that, well, I was going to say there's no one he hates more than Hillary. That's probably not true, but... You know, if I had to guess, it's it's probably. I think he hates himself. It's probably more than yeah. Well, but um, <laughs> let's just pause on this for a second. It's one to grow on. <laughs> so uh, I think I think that that's what that is. But of course, all the people, not all the people, but many people who follow President Trump, it, it definitely fuels the the argument of uh, yeah. Well, the Clintons have so many people killed all the time. <laughs> you know, going back to Vince Foster. And uh, I mean that's that's the big one that you usually get, but uh, there's there's others that we'll hear about uh, the and then. But it's just his natural reflex to deflect, and that's yeah. what he's doing. So right, yeah. I mean, uh, look, I wasn't suspicious of President Trump for having him killed until he started until he started blaming President Clinton. Then I'm like, oh wait, maybe he's just trying to create a diversion. <laughs> like, don't don't look over here. And that's just a joke. I actually don't think uh, that either one of them did. So. Uh, and uh, Betsy asked the question, why is Clinton radio silent about it all? Here's why. There's nothing to be gained by talking about mm-hmm. it. You know, you're going to try to clean, clear you your You deny name. it? Yeah, yeah that's I, just going to. Just, just don't acknowledge it. Honestly, yeah. it's something that President Trump should learn. There there are plenty of things that he ought to comment on, <laughs> but there's things that he goes on and on about. I'm just oh, like, if you, if you didn't mention that you accidentally came across Seth Meyers' monologue and all of the terrible things that unfunny Seth said, no one that, that shows see, on at twelve thirty. Nobody sees to it. To not mention those menial things would be a sign of maturity. Yeah, but no, unfortunately, well, I mean, our president doesn't have that. I mean, just imagine what this show would be like if he did. You know, I, would we have fun here? We we would. Well, we'd probably have more fun than the uh, "So You Think You Can Dance" crew. Uh, so anyway, that's what's going on. Did they park in your parking spot? The "Think You Can Dance" panel. They thought I could dance, <laughs> and I tried to tell them that I could some not. Some animosity but no towards. One. I couldn't think of any other shows. <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. I don't even think that's on right now. You know, I think it's in its off season. I, I don't. I, I don't know what shows are mm-hmm. happening right now. In any case, uh, to get back to uh, immigration, uh, is we talked about this at the top, and uh, Ken Cuccinelli 
and uh, a guy who probably always insists that people call him the cooch and everyone says like, nope, we're good. <laughs> we'll call you Ken. He's the acting director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. And he's defending. Cuccinelli, the- by the way, does that sound like an Anglo-Saxon name? <laughs> well, when he makes the, the Sussex point, Cuccinellis. When he makes the point that the Statue of Liberty is only talking about real immigrants from Europe, those would be the Cuccinellis, would it not? <laughs> That's well. you know. Uh, although, let's remember that. What, probably exactly 100 years ago right now, many businesses throughout New York had signs exactly. in the window that said Cuccinelli's need not apply. Mm-hmm. O'Grady's either, but still, definitely not the Cuccinelli's. So I think that, uh, and by the way, Ken Cuccinelli is somebody that I know from my days of doing largely conservative, but talk radio. And Oof. just as, as a guy who did books and, you know, he would write with uh, Michael Steele, who was the head of the GOP at one point. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how many people that we used to have on as guests on Dennis Miller's radio show are uh, either have been or are part of the administration. I'm looking at you, Kellyanne Conway. So are you saying Ken Cuccinelli was on the show? Uh, many times. Oh, he okay. had many books. So you've met him. I didn't meet him. He was on the phone. But, oh, okay. uh, yeah, I've certainly... I've certainly been like, Cooch, you ready? I didn't say that. But Cooch, you ready? Hang on, bro. He probably would have liked that. So the uh, so this is, and they went, Cooch went so far as to change the words to the poem that's on the base of the Statue of Liberty. And, of course, we have such a literate audience. You all know that it's Emma Lazarus's poem, The New Colossus. But I just figured I would mention that uh, to show that I have my computer open in front of me and read that. But... This, um, there's no new lows. We'd like to say that there's no surprises. This, I, I admit this one surprised me. That I was just like, okay, they're, they're all in on this. You know, they're all in on, uh, you know, there's no, there's no reprimanding of Ken Cuccinelli. You know, just think of literally any president at any point before, and I'm including Teddy Roosevelt, you know, I'm including, I'm including Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy, well, it's would just, have stood by comments like this. It's just astounding nowadays, I mean, amongst everything else that is astounding, but how you can excuse a, 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 a sentiment like that, that by immigrants we only mean people of European descent, yeah. and at the same time insist that you are the least racist person in the world. I yeah. mean, the fact that somebody thinks they can get away with saying like that, and the fact that somebody does get away with saying things like that, that he, 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 can, he can say the horribly offensive, closed-minded, racist things, and then also at the same time insist that he's not racist, um, not just Donald Trump, but so many other people in this administration. And it's just astounding that why do you even have a negative opinion of racism? Why is racism such a bad thing to you if... If you also allow yourself to to say and think these other horribly derogatory things, you know. Yeah. Well, most most times when a sentence starts, I'm the least racist oh. person you've ever met. <laughs> yeah. But usually, the yeah. the thing that follows the the but is uh, is not going to be the least racist thing you've ever heard. And it's it, always going to be pretty I far mean, from it. it because any <laughs> you. It's just such an absurd statement to say I am the least racist. That's not true for anybody. And and these these people that um, determine their level of racism based on well, I have nephews of of Hispanic heritage, or I have a daughter that's black, uh, uh, or uh, in uh, De Blasio's case, and you know, like using the fact that you might have a, a minority in your family or friends with and that excuses that that is proof that you are not racist is just yeah. so absurd and the fact that they don't understand that <laughs> that means nothing and in fact it's I wonder more if it's worth trying that. like going to uh it's, it's going, exhausting. going to an open mic night doing comedy where you start off with I'm the least racist guy you'll ever meet but and then you basically just take like old, you know, like Polish or whatever jokes that people used to tell. And then just you change the ethnicities for each of them. But each time you say, now, look, I'm the least racist person that you've ever met. 
but haven't you ever noticed, you know, and then you just, you, you, you can say the ex immigrant group Navy with the battleship and submarines and whatever the punchlines were, you know, I'm keeping it vague so I don't uh, offend. <laughs> we have, we have a very strong Polish base. I don't want them to think I'm telling <laughs> wanna... Polish jokes, but Don Rickles never claimed that he was the least racist person you've ever met. No, but you know what? He wasn't the most racist person on the tonight show. I actually don't even know what that meant. I'm, I'm, I'm casting aspersions on Johnny Carson for no real reason, <laughs> but in any case, Let's see. Uh, Betsy, I watched every episode of every season of The Apprentice, and I never sensed any racism. It was a diverse show. What happened? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, if you... Well, if there you were if, a, a if, good producers who yeah. knew what they were doing. If you believe Tom Arnold, what <laughs> happened... And we should all believe Tom Arnold about everything. I think that's fair to say. Well, he was kind of right about Roseanne. But anyway, uh, he, you would believe that all that stuff got edited out and that there's supposedly you know, tapes and vaults or tapes that have been destroyed of outtakes. Uh, uh, and Because yeah. of things, you know, racism aside, like he apparently uses the F word like every other word. So there, had, yeah. there was a lot of stuff that was on the cutting room floor that at this point that's gonna has make, just been destroyed. That's going to make me like him more, though, if if it's just Don't say every that. other thing's the F word. No, 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 no. That, just only that, not not the not the racist comments. I mean, no, I know what you mean. It's yeah. just that there's the even even that quality in any other person. I would say that, but not in, <laughs> yeah, not anyone in this else, one. like the Pope. Yeah. You know, if like when the mics are off, like well, you should have heard the Pope, man. <laughs> yeah. He has a Ooh. lot of he has a lot of immigrant ex jokes, by the way. Def, that Pope. Deaf mass jam. Deaf poetry jam. No, that didn't really work. That's all right. Uh, someone uh, speaking of the uh, F word, have. You all, including you, Tamara, have you seen the video of Chris Cuomo? Nope. So somebody went up to Chris Cuomo from CNN, uh, which uh, last time I checked is is still a news organization. But sometimes when you see their promos, it's a little dicey. But in general, they do still report the news. And he is still an anchor on that network. And he was approached by someone. And apparently this is a thing that conservatives go up to him and they call him Fredo reference from the godfather and he freaked out on this guy and told him that calling an italian american fredo is like the n-word now you don't need to know anything other about the story other than that in all honesty <laughs> except that the video is kind of amazing and chris cuomo threatens to throw this guy down the effing stairs so uh and you know the guy's just looking for <laughs> Cuomo to hit him actually because Cuomo's like what are you going to sue me he's like yeah that's he's like go ahead hit me he's like you first I'm like no I'm not going to start anything so as these things go uh, it's very entertaining but uh, also apparently that is again a misunderstood the way this the same way I just said uh, that any of these like old white dudes who who point to some relative that they have to prove that they are not racist to compare anything to the N-word, that is also not okay. There's yeah. The, the N-word is the N-word, and there is nothing else. You cannot call a white person anything that is on par with that word. Right, and I think that there is such a specific connotation to that word. You have centuries of just slavery and oppression, and Jim Crow. I could stop there. Nothing else compares to that. You know, the the signs in the windows uh, for Italians need not apply is is a terrible thing, but it's not that. And also, by the way, Fredo is not the word that is usually used to disparage Italian-Americans. And in fact, I had never heard it in that connotation. Also, I can tell you the words that were used because I am Italian-American, but as Italians are white people. Nobody usually ever guesses that I. I had am, no idea. Any... Also, your last name Brown. I didn't. Uh, yeah, well, I always it's a long wondered why you're so but, white. But um, uh, yeah, but that's. <laughs> it's just it's just it's insane to compare. He's so in the wrong to compare for the word Fredo, a reference to a movie. Yeah, to and, the N word, and it's also there's video of Chris Cuomo referring to himself as Fredo uh, about 10 years ago. So uh, all this does is it helps reinforce the idea of, yes, fake news CNN, uh, reporters who are in the bag, and just like, look how unhinged they are. To the extent that President Trump's re-election campaign is selling Fredo unhinged t-shirts 
And uh, when you sign up for uh, text alerts, I don't know if you get them for free or if you, I'm going to bet there's probably Wait, a I'm donation. Wait, I'm sorry, selling involved. Fredo Unhinged t-shirts. Yeah, t-shirts What's that say Fredo Unhinged. Well, because, Fredo unhinged. because oh. he's saying, I guess President Trump is saying that Fredo seems a little unhinged. Yeah, well, so uh, look, and we actually have a little of it. This has uh, got some potty language in it, so keep the kids away. Oh, look at that, it's beeped. It's an insult to your people. It's like the N word for us. Yep, there it was right there. So, and of course, as with everything <laughs> that happens in life, uh, except for things that you really need to see, like Jeffrey Epstein's cell, uh, we have video of it. So, yeah, you can uh, find that. And I think that if. He were, if he were a comedian or, you know, an actor or even somebody who comments on the news, uh, I think, you know, and he's not an actual newscaster. I, I don't think it's as big a deal, but it's just like, you know, you, the guy called your name. He didn't, he didn't threaten you. Probably could have hurt Chris Cuomo, by the way. So I'm, I think it's smart that he didn't get into a fight with him. Chris Cuomo's wife is there. It's just like, you know, uh, to be fair, the guy, the other guy in the video is definitely being a dick because he says, I thought that was your name. I thought your name was Freda. So he's yeah. definitely it's egging just, him on. Yeah, hot. Te- it's just being hot tempered, but still yeah. like, it, you know. Yeah, it just takes it too far. So yeah. I don't know. Does this uh, does this change the way anybody in the chat feels about Chris Cuomo or <laughs> CNN? Um, I, I like a few people on CNN, but uh, I, Jake I don't. Jake Tapper. I do love Jake Tapper. You know, he did a good job in the debates. Anyway, uh, let us know what you uh, think about that. And, you know, does anybody have a Fredo Unhinged T-shirt? You can go ahead and uh, send us your uh, photos of that. I can only think of one person in the chat who might have one of those. But uh, please let us know if you did. So there's a, there's a, lot, of a, there's a lot of other uh, stories to talk about. One of the things I wanted to talk about is that Joe Biden seems to uh, routinely uh, <laughs> step in it. And yeah. um, it's funny because he's actually a year younger than Bernie. He's a couple years older than Donald Trump. But, and I know it's supposed to be ages to even say this, but I'm pretty sure he's too old to be president. I think yeah. that when you, you know, it's like a couple of gaffes here and there, it's kind of funny, but it's just like, he's just getting so many things wrong. And Look, it looks like, well, not even it looks like, I guess uh, Bernie Sanders is uh, has a little bit of a higher edge in New Hampshire polling. And of course, anybody who's looked at polling in the last 15 years knows it doesn't really mean anything. But it's a little bit of an indicator. Obviously, day of, who knows what happens. And, you know, he was so far ahead of everyone. I think I read that Elizabeth Warren was tied in another poll, tied with him, not in the same poll. But so what do you think? is the best course of action for Joe Biden. There's no way to save face by just getting out of the race after you've only been in it for a couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to duck out, certainly, but um, he's going to continue to misspeak mm-hmm. and say things wrong. And, uh, you know, it. he he didn't get as much media attention uh, for... Also mislabeling where the last two shootings took place. There was far more of that on Donald Trump for saying Toledo instead of Dayton um, in the news. Rather, But even though uh, Biden also said they were in uh, Houston and Michigan, yeah. um, he keeps... Houston, he at least had the same state. You know, there was something to be said for that. <laughs> but... But anyway, and and to so you're your, voting for him. Uh, so <laughs> I'm mean, voting for me. <laughs> so, but yeah, he's going to continue to to keep saying things wrong i i don't think at this point uh, like is he losing voters by doing that i don't think so because i think the people that are supporting him would be the people making those same gaffes um in other words an older demographic or people that you know um have a (laughs) have a certain set of beliefs where saying the statement uh Wealthy kids or white, uh, what did he say? Like, um, oh, the, uh, what was poor it? Kids poor kids or, or white, white kids, kids yeah. you know, like where they're in their head, they're thinking, yeah, I know what he means, we know, yeah. know what he's saying, yeah. you know, like, so that's who is supporting him. Um, so I don't think his slip ups are, I don't think they're they're taking away from his numbers because, um, the people that support him don't care about that, and I don't, and I, and I don't think that he's losing 
you know, the, the people that are noticing that this is problematic language, they're yeah. not leaning towards him anyway. Right. I, I think that you have people who maybe support other candidates, but they feel like he's going to be the nominee. So they expect to come back to him at some point. So maybe if there's a shift in the polling, it's just really, you know, people are like, yeah, well, let's let's see what uh, Elizabeth Warren has to say. But when he's making mistakes like saying that the survivors of the Parkland shooting visited him at the White House when, of course, he wasn't <laughs> yeah. president or he wasn't he was never president. He, he wasn't vice president anymore. And, you know, look, he probably uh, sadly, he probably remembers quite a few survivors of shootings who visited the White House, you know, so it's it's not any one of these things isn't isn't uh, by itself such an egregious thing. It's just it seems to be consistently a problem. And it, you just wonder when the next de- debate rolls around, you know, what what's what's going to what's he going to say then, you know, and how much do the actual other favorites want to go in for the kill? Because you always have you have a few people there that are just there to kind of basically kind of, you know, take a take a, a Tanya Harding at the knees of somebody because they're just there, you know, that they're, they're just there to basically call somebody call out like the front runner for one thing. And then it's like, ah, good like for Delaney you, was trying to do you're, you're talking about. Yeah. Well, there's a, there were a few of them, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was one. And I actually liked a lot of what he had to say. Bless you. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but let us know what you think in the chat, uh, whether you're watching live or you're watching the archive version. If you think that this is going to hurt uh, Joe Biden, as he continue, he continues to be the front runner, uh, at least overall. But, and I don't know what it is because Bernie, I believe, I believe is older than him. But Bernie's just so fueled by his anger at everything. I think it just makes him seem younger, you know. And I, I don't know what Trump is fueled by, but it's probably eleven herbs Adderall? and spices. Adderall. Well, that's the twelfth herbs and herb and spice that uh, they crush up. Adderall for him. and buffalo sauce and. Mm. <laughs> That sounds good. Anybody who uh, is looking for a, a, a new cocktail. Uh, let's see. Well, we only have a, a few minutes. And uh, the Houston Chronicle, the, which is the newspaper that endorsed Beto O'Rourke for Senate, ha- is it now imploring him to end his bid for the White House. Uh, he there's. I don't believe that there's a Senate race for him to jump into right now. But uh, I guess maybe there would be next year. But... Uh, they're like actively saying, just stop doing this, stop running. And I I mean, sure, but I do think that there's also like eight other people who could get out before him. But uh, what do you think about uh, the paper like that had given him an endorsement? I think he would do better to, you know, continue to work within Texas, you know, Um, go back to the the Senate or the House of Reps uh, and and Continue to, you know, do work within Texas. Um, continue to, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe he should go for another governor's run or something right. like that. But um, I, I, I think he he's certainly not going to win the nomination. Oh, and I, no, I agree no, no, with no. you that yeah. uh, there are other people who should, who would, you know, should make more sense to drop out before him. But, yeah. but I think at this point, you know, like he, he could use his sway a lot better to continue to turn Texas more purple yeah. than try to aim for a higher office. And I think in the in the wake of the the shootings when he, you know, gave a very loud animated response to a question about President Trump, I think he showed his value as kind of a personality and more of like a a figurehead sort, you know, whether that be you know, in the media or just going around as a speaker. I, I don't quite, you know, fronting some organization. You want to say nonprofit, but, you know, I think that a lot of the nonprofits are also looking to make money. But some role like that, I think, is, is something he's better suited for. And look, there could very well be a time where, sure, he could run for president again in four or eight years. But, you know, build that base a little bit, yeah. you know. Not everybody gets to go from, like, community organizer to being, you know, in the Senate for like a minute and then the White House. It just doesn't happen that way. And also you didn't get into the Senate. Anyway, uh, usually we always stick to the really important hard hitting issues, but because it's just Tamara and I, I wanted to end on a very important story Uh here. A man in India pushed a BMW into the river because he had instead wanted a Jaguar for his birthday. 
Now, Tamara, this probably reminds you of, I don't know, Sweet 16 or maybe your graduation from high school when you wanted a Jaguar and you were irate when your parents gave you a BMW. And so you, of course, Boy, brought it to a river. If that were the case, me talking about the pile of nickels <laughs> under my bed, my life sure took well, a big dip. That was the problem. <laughs> you should have, you should have instead of putting it in the river, you should have sold that. Uh, and then... The, the, so this happened in India, and I guess uh, his father is very embarrassed. So he says that, no, 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 that's not what happened. He swerved to inv- avoid an antelope and drove it into the canal. But uh, I don't know. I, this is, and again, it's it's India, but I think it's, uh, I, I have no trouble believing this story at all. I'm just like, no. I mean, like, if you've ever been on Instagram. He, is it Jaguar? More expensive than a BMW? Like why? Why didn't it's he flashier. just get? It's flashier. Yeah, no, I would but say. like why? Why didn't the dad just get him that then? <laughs> well, no, the Jaguar is more expensive than the BMW. Oh, okay. So he got the BMW, and the BMW obviously it's a great car, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, Ryan in the booth, uh, uh, our resident daydream believer, has actually found uh, some of the uh, yeah. And uh, I don't, it doesn't look like a car that ended up in the, in the middle of a canal because somebody uh, swerved to get an antelope. But I tell you, when I was a senior in high school and I got to I got to drive around, a, I think it was a 1991 Geo Metro with uh, no air conditioning. I was just like, hey, I, I'm able to uh, go from point A to point B. Uh, but I guess my upbringing was a little different. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not as entitled as, as this guy. But um, anyway, I just thought it was a fun story. And we don't it's get to do fun. fun. We don't ever get to have time for fun stories because there's... <laughs> the river! You, oh, that would have been great. <laughs> a, little, uh, a little Farley there. Uh, Chris Farley, of course. Anyway, well, thank you to uh, everyone who enjoyed us for a lively chat. And thank you, Tamara, for being the one who showed up. But we'll be back next week on our normal day of Tuesday at 4 Pacific, at least I think so. Depends on who can show up. We might move it to another day if no one can show up. But uh, I expect to be here. But Tamara, until next time, where can people find you? Uh, Jaguar Driver 86. No, I'm just (laughs) kidding. Hey, Tamara on all social media. But isn't it Hey Tamara underscore on one of them? On Twitter, because yeah. Hey Tamara was already taken. By and some it's a, jerk. It's a, well, it's a dead account, and they won't let those go. I hate when they do that. Uh, but you can find me on a very alive account, at Christian DMZ. Follow the show at Trump Report ABTV, and you can find me tomorrow at 1 Pacific over on the Popcorn Talk Network for Marvel Movie News. Yes, ranked the number two podcast about Marvel. Very excited. And, uh, of course, back here next week for the Trump Report. See everybody next time. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or... 